I'm so honored. Um, I never expect there are so many people coming here to listen to my talk. And uh, when I was sitting there, I feel so important. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Before my talk, I would like to ask how many people here have used Alibaba services? Good, not many. <laughs> And how many of you have he here have never been to China? Never been. never been. Never been to China. Good. Thank you very much. Well, 20 years ago, I came to America. My first trip to America, to Seattle. Before that, I learned so much about America. From my books, from, a te from my teachers, from my school, and my parents. And I think I know enough about America. But when I came to America, I saw totally wrong. America is not what I learned from the books. And in Seattle, I found the internet. And then I came back and told my friends that I'm going to open a company called Internet. I invited 24 of my friends, had a two hour discussion. And finally, nobody understand, nobody supported me, we had a vote. 23 of them against me. They forget about it. There's no such kind of network called internet. Don't do it. There's only one person who said, Jack, I trust you. I don't know what that is, but if you want to try, go ahead, try it. Because you're still young. At that time, I was, I, was, I was 30 years old. So I started my business without knowing anything about computer, without knowing anything about business. I started my first company, my wife and I, and a schoolmate. We borrowed stuff from 1,000 US dollars. We started the business. It was so difficult. I called myself like a blind man riding on the back of blind tigers. Jumping around for the past 20 years, I survived today. But the first, for the first three years, life was really bad. I remember I tried to borrow 3,000 US dollars from the banks. It took me three months asking any friends I know to borrow the money and failed. Could not get borrowed the money. And everybody said Jack is telling a lie because there's no such network called internet, 1996. So one day, later 1996, China was connected to the internet. From Shanghai, we died a long distance called to Shanghai and Shanghai collected the world. I invited 10 media friends to my apartment. I I want to tell them I'm not telling a lie. There is a network called internet. We waited three hours and a half to see the first, to download the first picture. <laughs> and people say, is that thing going to work? And I say, yeah, it'll work, but not today. In 10 years, it'll work. But at least it proved that I was not telling a lie. I remember when we, try, uh, we, we tried to help our small business to sell online. Nobody want to sell because nobody come to buy, buy. So first week, we have seven employees, we buy and sell ourselves. The, first, the second week, somebody start to sell on a website. We buy everything they sell. <laughs> we have a two rooms full of things we bought for, for no use, or all garbage for the first two weeks. In order to tell people that it works. It was not easy. Since 1995 to 1999, we failed. We go nowhere our business, because every, nothing was ready. In 1999, I invited 18 friends of mine who came to my apartment. We decided to do it again. We called the name Alibaba.com. And people say, why Alibaba? It's a, we believe internet is a treasure island. We should open sesame for small business. And we, we're using Alibaba because it's easy to spell, easy to remember. And we want to focus on helping small business. Because at that time, we see the Ariba, Commerce One, the American e-commerce, they focus on helping big companies. They're focusing on helping big companies to save the cost. We believe China, we don't have a lot of big companies. We have so many small business. And small business, it's so difficult for, to, for them to survive. If we can use the internet as a technology to help small business, it will be fantastic. So we start saying, if America is good at uh, helping big companies, just like America is good at uh, making basketball, we should play ping pong in China. 
We should help the small guys. And we should not helping small guys to save cost because small business know how to save the cost. But small business should learn how to make money. So our business is focusing helping small business to make money online. And we want to make the company last for 102 years. And people are curious why 102 years. Because Alibaba was born in 1999. Last year we had last century we had one year, this century 100 years, next century one year. 102 will cross three centuries. We give a clear goal to any employees. Don't say we are successful. No matter how much money we raised, no matter how much money we make, no matter, no matter how much we have achieved, don't forget we want to live 102 years. Now 16 years passed, we have another 86 years to go. Because in the next 86 years, if any time we die, we're never successful. When I heard this club is 108 years old, I was surprised and shocked. There's so much we can learn from that. Well, today, nobody believed that Alibaba could survive because people say you are free, you're tiny, you know. And especially when we talk about when we IPO, people say, oh, you are Alibaba, you are e-commerce, you're like Amazon. Because in American points of view, Amazon probably is the only business model for e-commerce. But no, no, we are different. The difference between us and Amazon is that we do not buy and sell. But we help small business to buy and sell. We have 10 million small business on our site, buy and sell every day. And we do not deliver our packages, although ourselves, though we have more than 2 million people, help us to deliver over 30 million packages per day. We do not own warehouses, but we manage tens and thousands of warehouses for other sm small, medium-sized deliver companies. And we do not own inventories. But we do have more than 350 million buyers. We have more than 120 million buyers coming to shop every day on our site. And also, we, we sell our, our revenue last, our sales last year was 390 billion US dollars. And this year, possibly, we are going to be bigger than Walmart globally. And Walmart managed that size of business have more than 2.3 million people. We grow from 18 people to today 34,000 people. And the difference between Amazon and us, the other is Amazon is a shopping center. You go there, you, you buy things you want exactly it looks like. But in Alibaba, people, you, you, on the picture you see look like this, when you buy it, it's different. People feel surprised, wow, it's different. And they love it. Because here, e-commerce is a commerce. In China, e-commerce is a lifestyle. Young people of a minimum, they're using e-commerce to exchange ideas, they communicate, they build up the trust, they build up the record. It's just like a Starbucks. You never go to Starbucks to test how wonderful coffee is. It's a lifestyle. And this is how internet e-commerce is changing China. And what we feel proud of is not how much things we sell. I said this year will be bigger than Walmart. Yes, we are proud. We know in five years we will sell one trillion US dollars. And this is my goal, which we think possibly we will make it. We are proud of that, but we are more proud because we create a direct and indirect job, 40 million jobs for China. And we created the jobs in the countryside. We create a lot of jobs for women. Over 51% of the power sellers on the internet are women. So we feel so proud of that. And people say, okay, now Alibaba is that. What's your next? What's your future? Because you are everywhere. We 80% of the buy and sell online are created by our company. Our future is that we have to focus on globalize our business. It's not only sell more things, we want to make to globalize the e infrastructure of e-commerce. Why internet e-commerce grows so fast in China than in the USA? Because the infrastructure of commerce in China was too bad. Not like here, you have a click motors, you have all the shops offline, Walmart, Kmart, everything, everywhere. But in China, we have nothing, nowhere. So e-commerce in the U.S. is a dessert. It's a complementary to the main business. 
but in China it becomes the main cause. We created the infrastructure. So we think if we globalize our infrastructure, the payment, the logistics center, the transparent platform all around the world, helping the small business around the world to sell everywhere, help the global consumers to buy everywhere. Our vision is in 10 years, we will help 2 billion consumers in the world to shop online. Anywhere in the world, you're shopping online, within 72 hours, you'll receive the product. And anywhere in China, you shop online, you will receive the products within 24 hours. And we think our globalization is still a focus on helping small business and helping them to do business in the most efficient ways. And we think that we will help another 10 million business on our e-commerce platform. We will empower them, we give them the traffic, we give them the payment system, we give them the logistics system so they can do business anywhere easily and quickly. And we will help, we will have 40% of our business outside China. Today, we only have 2% of our business outside China. So, people keep on asking, now you're big, you raise that much money, what's your plan in America? People say, well, are you going to come? When are you going to come to invade America? When are you going to compete with Amazon? When are you going to compete with eBay? Well, I would say we show great respect for eBay and Amazon. But I think the opportunity and the, the strategy for us is helping small business in America go to China, sell their products to China. China in the next, today China, the middle class for the China is almost the same as the American population. And we think in 10 years, there will be more than half billion Chinese people will be middle class. The demanding for middle class, the demanding for good products, good service was so powerful, so strong. And I think China today cannot afford the good products, good service to them by the terrible air we have, the water we have, the land resources. I don't think China would be able to do that. And the next is that China has been focusing on in exporting in the past 20 years. And I think next to 10, 10, 10, 10 20 years, China be, should be focusing on importing. China should learn to buy. China should spend the money. China should buy a lot of things from globally. And I think that American small business American branded products, you should use in the internet, go to China. Past 20 years, big companies of America is already all over the China. But it's the great opportunity for using the e-commerce for small business to go to America. In the past years, we have helped a lot of American farmers selling things to China. For example, the Seattle cherries. You will never believe that the ambassador, um, American ambassador to China, he came to us and say, Jack, can you help us to sell the cherries in Seattle? I say, how can we sell cherries? The cherries are still on the trees. And we started to play order. 80,000 families booked the order. And when we got the order, we, ship, we pick up the cherries and ship to China. Within 24 hours, 80,000 families, 160 tons of cherries were sold. And last year, we sold over 300 tons of cherries. And I don't know what's this year about. We also helped Alaska Seafood. We helped Canada to sell the lobsters. The lobster we sold, probably 10 years they cannot sell. And we also have a lot of American branded companies like Nokia, Estelander, and companies using our site to sell. And Costco, the company, they sold 600 tons of nuts on our site for the first month and the rep for the first month they're using Alibaba 6.5 million US dollars. So I think if we can help to sell lobsters, if we can help sell the cherries, why we cannot help these small medium-sized companies to China using our system? So this is what I want. And also I want to take one day, for example, November, November 11, the singlest day. We make that as a shopping day. Last year, for that day, we sold 9.7 billion US dollars. And for the first minute, 
shopping, we have 24 million people rushed in for the first minute. And this year, we guess the number was scary. So my purpose coming here that we need more American products to China. We have hungry 100 million people coming to buy every day. So this is why we come here. We not come here to compete. We come here to bring the small business. My vision is that in 10, 20 years, anywhere, you buy anywhere, sell anywhere. Philippine people can buy salmon on Norway. Norwegian people can sell things to Argentina. Argentina can buy and sell to China. This is how the internet is going to change. And lastly, I want to say, we have changed China. We feel proud of that. And we think that the, change, the power of change is so powerful. The first revolution of technology, we have the, the organization of business called a factory, and had a first world war because of the strength of the arm, arms and muscles. The second revolution, energy, we have the organization called companies, and have the second world war. This time, internet the data, and I think we have a new business called Platform, and the third world war is going to happen. And this war is not between nations. This war we work together to against the disease, the poverty, the climate change. And I believe this is our future. The human being, the nation should unite together. Rely on the young people using not the guns, using computers, using the data to solve the human problem, solve the society problems. And this is what I'm passionate about. It's not about the money, it's about the dreams. It's not only the technology change the world, it's the dreams you believe that change the world. And we know the way, the way is not easy. As I always told in the past 20 years doing internet business in China, today is difficult and tomorrow is much more difficult. But the day after tomorrow is beautiful. Most people die tomorrow evening if you don't work hard. Thank you very much.